First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Greetings, greetings. Welcome once again. All right, today's show is going to be on Noble Drali and the infiltration of the MSTA. Now, um, of course, I'm pretty sure the listeners know who Prophet Noble Drali is or was. Um, he formed the Moorish National Divine Movement in which that many, I guess you can say, um, beginning stages of the organization came about the Canaanite Temple in 1913, which was not incorporated. Then he had the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World, which was also known as the Holy Moabite Temple of the Science of the World. And the Prophet, um, basically, that was um, what he formed in Newark, New Jersey, on May 1st, 1916. All right, some say that it was actually incorporated as the Holy Moabite Temple of the World. And then, of course, um, we have um, the incorporation of 1926, the Moorish Temple of Science, which was actually the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World in which that the word holy at the time could not be documented. So hence, it was only a civic organization at that particular time period. And um, it evolved into, of course, um, the Moorish Temple of Science, and it was unofficially founded in 1925, and it said that the first member said that there's been a woman by the name of Lily Sloan um, Bay. Um, and then officially incorporated on November the 29th, 1926, as a civic organization with five members at the board of directors. And, of course, that was Prophet Noble Dr. Ali, um, James Lomax, John E. Reynolds, um, Eddie Watts and Samuel Ruckus. 
and then of course the incorporation of 1928 of the Moral Science Temple of America transformed it into a religious organization. Um, the Moral Holy Temple of Science and the Moral Science Temple of America is civic and religious sides fall up under the umbrella of the Moorish National and Divine Movement. Now, Prophet Nobu Ali, who was born Timothy Drew in 1886, was said to be raised on a Cherokee reservation. Um, the name of it was called Simpson Buck, but actually there's no county in North Carolina called Simpson Buck. Um, it's called Sampson County, and Sampson County um, is near Bladen County, all right, uh, which is one of the largest counties. And Sampson County, um, there's a reservation there, which is called the Chohari, and the Choharis are remnants of the Cherokee. And this is the said reservation on which that he was raised up on. All right, we know that it is said that he went to many, I guess you would say, places. It is alleged that his aunt, who treated him real mean, attempted to put him or throw him in fire in which that um, caused him to leave. It is said that his mother and father died when he was young. Now, there's something interesting about who his mother and father was taught by, in which that links him into a history of um, the Sufi teachings. It is said that his mother and father was trained by, or a family members was trained by, Jamal Afghani um, Bay, um, who was um, a Sufi master. Now, interestingly, Jamal Afghani also taught the esophical founder, Madame Bavaski, who was a member of the Rosicrucians. And some allege that she became the arch enemy of Pastel Beverly Randolph. This is what some allege. This was this is actually was according to one text. And we don't know if that's true or not. But it is um supposedly um, said that she may mention that the nigga is hitting at me from the grave. But we ain't gonna, we're not going to build too much on that. But we just seeing the connections of the Rosicrucian theosophical teachings um, alleged into the family of Prophet Noble Drali and the influence in which that it's possibly had on his life because it is said that Jamal Afghani came to America um, 1882, and it is said that the family members of Prophet Nubadr Ali, who lived in Newark, New Jersey area, um, as well as also in New York, uh, went to a temple in Brooklyn, which was called the Moorish Zionist Temple. in which that, um, it has been alleged that was founded by Leon uh, Rochello in the late 1800s. Um, some say it was founded 1889. Some days that it was founded 1899. Depends on which text on which that you get. All right, I heard here lately that it is alleged that the Moor Zionist Temple was founded afterwards, after um, the establishment of Prophet Nobadrali's 
uh, temple. I have not found any information on which that correlates to that fact as of yet. Um, but I have found that it is um, that it states that the Moor Zionist temple was founded by Leon Rochelle, um in 1889. Excuse me, in 1899. Um, even though it was told to me that it was founded in 1889. So. There's some discrepancy as far as the date is concerned. But we're looking at the connections more so than the dates. And so, um, Prophet Nobudra Ali formed the Canaanite Temple in 1913, um, disbanded within the three years. In 1916, um, he formed the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World, or what became known as the Holy Moabite Temple, Science of the World, in which that he disbanded that also based on infiltrators who came in, disrupted the organization, and that's when he was in New York, New Jersey. And he moved himself and the remnants of the temple to Chicago, Illinois, in which that he formed um, at that time. It was unofficially, I guess you could say, named the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. At least this is what is also um, stated by... If you get the book, um, The Negro, The Black, The Moor, by Romani Amanuel, he's the former National Grand Sheik, Clarence Renoel. And if you see it, he says there was two, um, two notable pioneers who sat under both Noble Drali and Noble Drali reincarnated. Of course, he's known as... Um, um, it was Grand Sheik Hamid and the Sinel. All right. And he says here that Grand Sheik Hamid and um, Anderson L are known as Brother um, Hamid L, as he referred to, because was moderator teacher of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science until his transition several years ago. This is what he says. I'm um, Grand Sheikh, I'm um, Brother Ahmed Anderson L. He says, when I became a member in March 1928, the charter on the wall in the meeting hall read, the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. Our nationality cards read, Moorish Holy Temple Science of the World. Later on in the year of 1928, the prophet said that he had to strike his charters, but that in most of the temples he had a strip of paper which read more Science Temple of America. And this was pasted on the charter, covering up the more Holy Temple Science of the World. Um, there was a few more charters that he did not touch, one in Chicago, one in um, Charleston, West Virginia. And at that time, the questionnaires and the um, Quran read the more Holy Temple of Science. Um, this is what um, Brother Ahmed Anderson Hill said before his um, passing form. And that's um, very interesting because on the back of the authorities, the one on um the infiltrated one says the Morris Science Temple of America adopted and incorporated the Morris Science Temple of America. And that is inaccurate. Is actually the Moorish Science Temple, the Moorish Temple of Science. Um, in that regard, the Moorish Temple of Science from or adopted and incorporated the Moorish Science Temple of America. So that's what it was known as. And even if you read um, in Lowe's Pleasant Bay's book, um, Zooming of a Nation. 
for the biography of um, Prophet Noble Drali. He writes that um, even when Charles Kirkman Bay formed his uh, branch of the Moore Science Temple, which became the Moore Science Temple of America Incorporated in 1934 in the Rules and Regulations, he writes of the Moore Science Temple of America and the Moorish Holy Temple of Science as set forth by the grand body of the 7th Annual Convention. So um, it was still going at that time until um, they disbanded the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. Um, At least that branch did in 1934. But it was still going on even after the passing form of Prophet Nubadra Ali on you know, which that occurred July 1929. So um, these are some very interesting things in which that took place. And um, this is what um, one of the nobles say, um, Z-A-L. Um, he says, um, after Noble Drew Ali left the physical plane in July of 1929, the Moorish Divine and National Movement became fragmented. Several um, influential individuals, namely Charles Kirkman Bay, um, Edward Meliel, John Givenel, and Elijah Muhammad by way of Louis Lomax and W.D. Farad, who knows Master Farad Muhammad, made strong attempts to teach the Moorish descendants in North America, but several essential elements were lost, nationality and or economic, social, and political power. The unconscious and partially un- unconscious Moorish Americans in an embryonic state sought guidance and identity from the later 1920s to the current day. Many Asiatic people have fallen into a perpetual state of stagnation. Although it was Nobel Ali that first taught the Moorish descendants that they were not Negroes, blacks, and colors. Many important elements for a clean and pure nation was lost, ignored, um, or plainly sacrificed for the sake of a title, position, or charismatic personality. Eighty years later, the Asiatic Muslims that Noble Drali awakened are now more divided than ever before. Ladies and gentlemen of the ancient Asiatic and Moorish identity, there is but one nation of Islam, as we are one people bearing one free national name. The mighty house was divided, egos were created, personalities were followed, and unity became a word instead of an action. Now, this is what Brother um, Noble Z.A.L. Um, states. Now, I can definitely understand what he's talking about because... We think that the rift, or the, what is called the Great Schism, occurred based on when Noble Drali uncovered the suppression of our true identity, you know, as far as a nationality is concerned. In other words, tying it back to a land. So in a sense, Prophet Noble Drali um, was the first born or the first resurrected of the dead. And in 1928, he went to the Pan-American Conference held in Havana, Cuba, in which that at the time the Secretary of um, of State, um, Hughes, went down to represent the United States, and Noah Drali went down to represent the Americans, the Moors, Moorish Americans. And um, at that conference, the mandate for the landmass of the Greater Mexico was returned to the Moors. All right, Noah Drali knew what this meant and what the ramifications of this was. All right, and it's now you can get that tidbit of information from Exhuming of the Nation, the autobiography of Prophet Noble Ali by um, Alou Pleasant Bear. It is also in another book called The Pyramids of um, No, The Book of the Dead, the Montauk, The Book of the Dead, written by Peter Moon. He has a chapter in there called The Ali Shuffle, in which that he states um, nearly the same thing. And he says, So Noble Ali took several stops gap measures to secure our 
Moore's birthright or Moore's birthright inheritance and beneficiary interest as Moore's to the land mass um, within the um, aforementioned land um, mandate, in which was part of the vast express trust. Now, when he laid claim to all our land, the whole financial foundation of this country and others were at stake. Two months after Noble Drali made transition in 1929, the board of directors over the wealth of the Moorish nation, hence Wall Street, and i.e. Um, occupying Wall Street is occurring once again with the awakening of the Moors, realized that it was too late. The stock market crashed and the United States was forced to declare bankruptcy. All right, and this time, when the stock market crash, it would be turned back over into the hands of the Moors. In 1993, there was a congressman that stood up in Congress and said, paraphrasing, he said, gentlemen, we are witnessing the greatest Chapter 11 reorganization in the history of the world, that of the United States of America. And that reorganization came from 19... 19- 33, with the New Deal by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, um, in which that you had the House Joint Resolution 192, in which that took the monies of um, um, that was being backed by gold off the standard. So the monies are no longer being backed by gold. And by 1972, um, Richard Nixon took it from off the silver. So by 1990, by 1973, um, the monies was no longer being backed by gold and silver, simply fiat notes, as we know of, and hence um, what we have been in um, since. All right, the Europeans went to the Moroccan. This is what Prophet, this is what Prophet Noble Ali said. He said the Europeans went to the Moroccan government and asked for permission to come over here to develop this land. They were given a 50-year mandate to do so. All right, now we know what is this 50-year mandate. Well, every 50 years, there's a mandate in which that has to be um, signed. It's called the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between Morocco and the United States. All right. Now, this is what he... um. Prophet Noble Drali goes on to say, and what people don't know is that Prophet Noble Drali was not just Cherokee, in which that was his father's side, would show forth his indigenous ship, um, and his father's name was John Drew, or John Quit, uh, Quitman Drew, um, hence the reason why he used the Drew name. But even more important was his mother because the um, tie to the land comes through the mother bloodline. And his mother was Eliza Turner, or Tunica, who was Washator. And she's part of the landmark case, the heirs of Henry Turner versus the United States, in which that the United States lost in the United States Supreme Court. Article Three Court, that is. We're not talking about Article Two and Article One Courts in which that individuals nowadays want to utilize in order to try to um, downplay the Washington. But we're talking about actual Article Three court cases in which that the heirs of Henry Turner showed forth that the Washington proper, Miss Norman, Louisiana proper, was never purchased. So there is no such thing as a Louisiana purchase. The only thing in which that was purchased by, or was attempted to be purchased by Thomas Jefferson, was the barracks in New Orleans and some streets. One particular street is Bourbon Street, in which that, where they have the Mardi Gras annually now. These were the only streets, well, the streets and the barracks, the military barracks, and it was going to be $15 million in gold to be shipped to France up under Napoleon Bonaparte. But I think it was 11750000 in gold in which that reached Napoleon. But the deal was $15 million in gold. So come to find out, $3 million 
$250,000 in gold sunk beneath the ocean floor off the coast of Florida, and he never received it. So hence, service was never rendered, and hence, those barracks and streets, even in New Orleans, was never purchased. And the rest of the land was never part of the land deal anyway. It was fraudulent, and Thomas Jefferson knew of the fraudulent land deal at the time. And according to Empress Vortiasi Gaston Turnell Bay, she has stated that um, in articles, in newspaper articles, and in video, that it was a fortunate land deal. And come to find out that Noble Ali, he states that Prophet Noble Ali, he states that I am the fifth and the last prophet, and I am five times more powerful than I was before. Now, that's interesting because when you look up Henry Turner or Henry Joseph Turner, um, who became the recipient of the 1762 and 1795 Imperial Spanish um, land grants, and he was the third Marquis D. Mason Rouge, you find out that the eldest daughter of um, the son of Henry Joseph Turner estate. You have Frederick and Frankie, um, which is was the Empress Verdiasi Gaston Turner L. Bay's mother and father, and then Verdiasi was married to John Gaston, who was the son of um, Coretta um, Turner, who was the daughter of Eliza Turner, and the sister of Prophet Nobadra Ali. Now, Eliza is the mother of Prophet Nobadra Ali, and she was part of that landmark case that we're talking about, and Eliza is the daughter of Sarah Tunica and Henry Joseph Turner. All right? And Nobadra Ali was the fifth Marquis D. Mason Rouge. So he was the fifth prince, the crown prince of the actual land in which that is part of this vast estate, in which that is spoken of within the more science temples of America, spoken of by the Washington and many other indigenous um, groups. And this is what is not told. Right, you had the United States Supreme Court um, case number 31 and 191 of um, of 18, of 1948, United States versus the um, heirs of Henry Turner affirms that the estate of the Washita, which is actually over 68,883 acres of land constituting the north half of the present state of Louisiana. The land is the personal and private property. I'm heir to the 1795 Spanish land grant, Mason Rouge. And it just, it just goes on. And you can get this information from the return of the ancient ones, uh, written by the Empress, Bordiasi, um, Tunica, Washington, Gaston L. Bay, as well as also, um, in my book, The First World Order, in which that we go into in-depth detail about these connections. Now, the Emperor spoke about 30 million acres of land in which that stretched all the way from Florida along the 13 states all the way um, up into Canada, the whole of Canada. So all the way from Florida, all the way to Louisiana, parts of Texas, all the way up into what is called um, on the other side of the Rocky and Allegheny, all of that land, all the way up into Canada. Cannon land is actually the land of the Washington, some 30 million acres and more. And you can see in a children's book, in an eighth grade book in social studies, where they show you the original Louisiana Purchase.
now. If you get the book, The Controversial Years of the Moral Science Temple of America, by um, Chief Minister Dr. Ross Adiel, the executive ruler, and there's a new book out by Sheck Wael, um, Lord Abba. Some interesting information in which that you will see an actual picture of one of the conspirators. Actually, there were several conspirators, but one in particular was Claude Green Bay. And you see that Claude Green Bay was the business manager. And there's an actual article in which that Claude Green Bay quits his business manager position or post. Now, what happened is that in 1929, Nobel Ali created a multi-million dollar um, empire. Jealousy, as we just finished talking about from the land mandate information, and also jealousy provoked several of the um, of his MST high, you know, level businessmen or officials. Um, one of his officers, in particular, was Sheikh Claude Green Bay, who accused Drew Ali of wasting um, MSTA revenue on himself and a concession and a secession of women. Now, the whole time is that Claude Green. Bay actually was um, admired and loved Pearl Drew Ali, and it's alleged that um, he and her had an affair. All right? Now, in 1929, there was a special meeting held um, of the Supreme Grand Council where at least four members were immediately removed, having all of their credentials revoked. That was um, James Lomax. Claude Green Bay, um, Sister Pearl, Drew Ali, and um, Small Bay. All right? So that struggle for power erupted between Ali and um, um, Shaq, Claude Green. And it exploded on, um, I think it was around like March 12, 1929, where Claude Bay you know, who was said to have a relationship with Pearl Ali, the wife of Drew Ali, staged a coup by pronouncing himself the Grand Sheik, you know, stripping um, Drew's headquarters of all files and furniture, you know, and putting it out, you no know, side of Unity Hall. You know, where he began to call for the assassination of all whites and all Moors who objected to his leadership. He claimed himself Grand Sheik, and he took the number of um, Nobel Ali's followers along with him. And um, this is where you get um, this coming in at, is the individuals who went with him, who became the conspirators. It says the um, split quickly became extremely um, nasty because Claude Green ended up being stabbed and shot. Right, the person who um, shot him is supposedly um, Ira Johnson Bay from Pittsburgh, who supposedly was called in by Drew to remove this bad tooth. This is what is alleged. Once again, I wasn't there. I don't know. However, um, this is what has been alleged in far as in many writings or the remnants of information that we have from those who were there during that time period, who've passed on now. In other words, the elders are Moors. All right? And so it says, um, it is alleged that Drew went out of town because he was dealing with the Supreme Grand Governor Lomax Bay, who became Professor um, Azazin Muhammad later on, who forms his own group, and Supreme Grand um, Governor Lomax Bay um, had also supported um, Green Bay's attempted coup. All right? He leaves and come back in late 1930s from Egypt, Turkey, and he forms the Abduni um, Alahi 
Universal Advocate Association, a Sunni organization. But regardless, um, the Prophet returns and attends a meeting February 15th in 1929, where James Lomax stated that he was now in power and the fin- finances was now in his um, um, was now his in front of 1,500 um, members, and that the Prophet himself which brought about the charges of investment of $8,000. The money that Profit has been using uh, for MSTA business, in other words, travel and so forth and so on. All right. Now, there's many other things in which that also took place. And um, Prophet Nobu Jali warned Lomax Bay, you know, to be careful. Um, this is in a letter actually written December 20, um, 7th, 1928, to be careful of the propaganda and news that you hear. You know, he told him this. He warned him. But this is the thing. After um, the removal of the um, known traders from the office and enrollment, um, which includes um, Sister Pearl, Drew, um, the Prophet reestablished the Supreme Grand Council and focused more upon um, his other wife, uh, who was Sister Mary Drew Ali, uh, Foreman Bay's daughter. And um, the Prophet passed formed on Saturday, July 20th, 1929, at his home, um, Indiana Ave in Chicago, where um, Dr. Clarence Payne L., um, his son, attorney Aaron Payne L. Um, his brother, um, the brother um, Foreman Bay, um, who's the father, who's the father of Prophet's wife, um, Sister Mary Drew Ali. Um, matter of fact, um, Dr. Clarence Payne L. filed a death certificate, which pronounced that the Prophet died of tuberculosis, um, bronco pneumonia. Right, which I've actually seen a copy of. Now, the prophet's body was taken to uh, Frank Edwards' funeral parlor, and he was laid to rest um, at the Burke Oak Cemetery. Now, the interesting thing is that one more um, during that time period, we told the Chicago defendant that the prophet was not ill, that his work was done, and that he laid his head upon the lap of one of his followers and passed out. Now, this has also been said by some of the Moors, um, some of the Moors, in which that, that information has been passed down. Um, but we know prior to the prophet's passing form that he was arrested as an alleged accessory to homicide over Claude Green Bay, and he was released on bond, and it is said that um, Drew promoted David Ford L., who some say, a.k.a. is Master Fra Muhammad, as the acting head Grand Sheik. Now, I have to ask the question. Now, the Supreme Grand Sheik was um, Edward Milley Ill, and normally when the prophet was out of town of Chicago One Temple, he would have been put in place. Obviously, at this time, it is said that he was threatened by Charles Kirkman Bay and others. Um, So we don't know exactly what went on with that, but he was not there. And instead, supposedly David Ford L., who was known later on as Master Muhammad, became the head of the Chicago Temple One at that time period. This is what has been alleged. Now, some say that Master Muhammad... um, the one in which that formed the nation of Islam was serving three years in San Quentin and didn't gain release until May 27th, 1929. No, supposedly he purchased a one way ticket to Chicago where he joined the Moore Science Temple, and then one month later, Noble Ali was found dead at his home. The cause of his death has never been determined. That's what some say. Even though we have to, I even though I seen the birth certificate where it says that he died of pneumonia, 
but some speculate, this is what I've been hearing over the years, that some speculate um, that he died as a result of injuries sustained by beatings from the police officers when he was in jail. Others insist that he had been murdered by his rivals. And the autopsy was never conducted, and the full-scale police investigation never conducted. Right. Now, who are these individuals? We may mention of Ira Johnson Bay. Well, Ira Johnson Bay. Like we said, um, was the individual who actually shot um, Claude Green Bay. All right. And um, supposedly after a meeting with um, Ira Johnson Bay, he had with the prophet about um, this situation, Ira Johnson Bay took it upon himself to remove the problem called the bad tooth altogether. And in the meantime, Claude Green Bay put all the um, profits off his furniture out of the Boosters Club um, headquarters called Unity Hall on the street. It was right after this move that Ira Johnson Bay and three other members paid Claude Green Bay a visit on March 21st, 1929, where there was a fight at the Boosters Club or Unity Hall where Claude Green um, Bay was shot by Ira Johnson Bay and stabbed multiple times by the three assailants. Later, Small Bay admitted it was Ira Johnson Bay that had done the shooting to the police. It was Small's Bay's testimony um, about the meeting that the prophet held before the shooting that caused the police to charge the prophet in connection to it and took him to jail. Small Bay, um, having been upset about having been removed from office and replaced by William Morrisell, by the prophet himself earlier for supporting Claude Green Bay and James Lomax Bay. All right, and then on, I think it was March 22nd, 1929, um, shots also was fired at James Lomax Bay, um, Bay at the Temple Number no. 4. Um, and supposedly by Ira Johnson Bay, who said to have been outside on the local phone, but he was missed. And a fight broke out between those loyal to um, James Lomax Bay and those loyal to the Prophet. Then a full riot broke out, and two police officers and two Moors were badly hurt. And um, these Moors were um, at Stone Bay and Z Low, Low Bay. All right, and there's an actual um, clip from a newspaper of Ira Johnson Bay who goes on to jail and becomes um, a law L. All right. Now, Ira Johnson Bay was disappointed with Supreme Grand Sheik um, Edward Melio because he was made the Grand Advisor at the 1929 convention. So he was trying to take charge of the movement, you know, starting with the people who had, you know, had the paperwork first and foremost. So Ira Johnson Bay was arrested after the shootout with the police. They saw over 100 bullets was fired at the shootout, and there was at least three dead, one being a follower of Ira Johnson Bay. All right, so Ira Johnson Bay, um, one of them who was with Ira Johnson Bay was killed. It wasn't until later, while in prison, that he started calling himself a law and gained a small following from there. And um, Ira Johnson Bay passed, um, formed December 5th, um, 1948, no, 1949. All right, now, in a letter from Supreme Grand Sheik um, Edward Millie-Hills to Aaron Paynell, who is the Supreme Business Manager, he, um, Supreme um, Aaron Paynell took the position of Claude. Claude Green Bay, and that on August the 29th, 1929, Edward Millie had to warn um, Aaron Payne L. to stay in line with the profit structure and practices from that time of the National Convention to hold their at that meetings. 
three weeks later at the 1929 convention, there was a further greater division between the members of the MSTA because in his attempt to bring peace, stability back to the movement, um, many of the followers of the Prophet were highly upset by the nomination of um, Charles Kirkman on September um, Charles Kirkman Bay on September 19th, 1929. Um, that, matter of fact, was the same night that um, John Gibbons Ill claimed to be the reincarnated prophet or the prophet reincarnated to everyone and um, stormed out of the 1929 convention and um, Aaron Payne L um, took the Morris Charter with him. And so Ira Johnson Bay um, started taking the whole issue into his own hands by first having some of the followers to go after Aaron Payne L and the Morris Charter. And these men was um, J. Mosby, Mosby, um, L and um, J. Johnson Bay and J. Davis L and J. Gibson L. Now Stephen Gibbons um, um, Bay and um, George Johnson Bay vied for power. All right. Later, the two claimed Drew Ali had entered them. They were saying that he was the incarnated prophet, and um, Stephen um, Gibbons uh, founded a new Moorish temple in Chicago in 1941. All right, so was a, this was the great schism that we're talking about. All right. Now, on September the 25th, 1929, um, Ira Johnson Bay had more of his followers to kidnap now Charles Kirkman Bay to get the certificate that Charles Kirkman Bay had been given when appointed the Grand Advisor, which is said to have um, 21 governors, the original title of the um, Grand Sheik's um, signature upon it from the said 21 temples. He also claimed to possess um, Drew Ali's last will and testament. So Ira Johnson Bay told them that Brother Charles Kirkman Bay must be brought in, and I want to see the sheiks to go after, and I want the sheiks to go after him, and you better arm yourselves, and in case he refused to come voluntarily, you can use force and bring Kirkman Bay back dead or alive. And by all means, get the certificate. This is what Ira Johnson Bay said. All right, allegedly, they went to Charles Grimmett Bay's house, and uh, they took him right in front of his wife in broad daylight and forced him into a waiting taxi cab. Um, then they took um, him back to Ira Johnson Bay. All right, um, some of the men that was there was D. Francis Jackson Bay, um, Mosey Jackson Bay, Eugene Jackson Bay, and um, J. Stevenson Bay. And J. T. Stevenson Bay was the individual who was killed by um, Sergeant Frank Reynolds. He was the individual who was with Ira Johnson Bay that was killed. Um, it was um, Eugene Jackson Bay and Mosley Bay that actually took Charles Kirkman Bay physically from out of his home. All right. And um, it was there that Mosley Bay, um, and it says a member, um, told the police about Mosley Jackson Bay involvement and they went to his house and then Mosley Jackson Bay led the cops to Charles Kirkman Bay where he was being held at. And um it was um Sergeant O'Toole um that finally found Charles Kirkman Bay yelling, Don't shoot, I'm the man that you're looking for. Please save me Right now there's also pictures of these um, Mosley Jackson Bay and a Wilson L, who's the individuals who actually participated in this kidnap. Now, there's also talk about how there's over 1,000 police officers surrounded Albert Johnson Bay's home, and Albert Johnson Bay refused to release Kirkman. And when um, police tried to break in and rescue him, a shootout ensued, and two police officers and one more was killed, all right? 
and um, they picked up 64 Moors. They was arrested. 64 Moors was arrested, and Albert Johnson Bay was charged with the murder of a police officer. Also, so from that, um, you had um, Charles Kirkman Bay. Who was made an adept um, due to um, him being um, placed within their affairs? Um, when he was placed in the affairs of the Prophet due to a visit in Cuba as the Prophet's interpreter in 1928, uh, Charles Cook was highly um, educated and spoke many languages. Right? Um, it's a you know, it's alleged that he spoke 92 languages. And um, he set up his um, MSTA, Incorporated, in 1934, under a new set of rules and regulation. Um, and he held this um, office from 1934 until 1959 when he passed. He also wrote a book called The Mysteries of the Silent Brotherhood of the East. It was written by Colonel C. Kirkman Bay, in which that um, is derived um, and flowed from the Aquarian Gospel by Levi Dallins. All right? And so you have that branch in which that now um, is... Um, who presently presides over that particular Charles Kirkman Bay's branch or, or um, part of that is um, um, Grand Sheik and moderator um, Arch Jones Bay. Okay, and then, of course, uh, we spoke about John Givenell, who um, in the 1929 convention stated that he was um, the reincarnation of the prophet. Now, before we get to him, let me say that Charles Kirkman Bay supported Chloe Green Bay um, and the upsurge of Prophet Nobu Ali's um, position. Now, this is alleged. All right, then we have his chauffeur, who was John Givenell, who was the chauffeur, and also who uh, was the mechanic um, now um Charles Kirkman um another interesting point before you move on, not only was he Charles Kirkman Bay was close friends with Claude Green Bay. But um, we found out that um, Charles Kirkman Bay was also schoolmates with Prophet Nobadrali. At least this has also been alleged. But um, let's go to John Givenell. John Givenell, um, joined the temple in 1926. He was allegedly removed from the enrollment in 1928 when he told the prophet that he was a law. And um, really no, no one heard from him, you know, at least not the members um, in large regard until that convention in 1929. But um, at the time, he was um, a member um, two weeks after his death. Um, this is what it says. It says two weeks after his death, to my prophet number Ali, a member of Chicago was aboard in the Temple One. Um, Sheikh John Givenell publicly announced that he was the reincarnated prophet Nobu Ali, August 7, 1929. John Givenell was a native of Sumter, South Carolina. He was born December 6, 1904. Upon coming of age, um, Givenell traveled west, finally settling in Chicago, Illinois, on May 14, 1925. Shortly thereafter, he embraced the teaching of prophet Nobu Ali and joined the Moorish movement. After a brief time, or period in the temple, he was initiated into their death chambers. He also became the chauffeur mechanic for the Prophet Nobu Ali. 
it was reported that one day while working on the Prophet's automobile shortly after his death, given ill fainted, when his eyes was examined, he had the sign of the star and crescent in one eye and the circle seven in another. Right, this is what it said now. As you hear, there's a lot of mysticism involved in the more science. And so um, it comes a time where a lot of the mysticism has to be decoded. And then, um, you know, September 19, 1929 is when um, Gibbons made that declaration, once again made a declaration. It was during the second annual national convention of the Morris Island Temple of America where John Givenel will once again make his declaration of reincarnation. It was September 19, 1929, the Morris Confer- um, Conference or Convention um, was entering its final hours. Lengthy discussions had been held concerning the Prophet's last instructions. It was around this time that John Givenel entered the convention hall, walked straight up to the platform, and sat himself in the vacant chair and declared, I am back. And he then said, I am the Prophet Noble Drali, reincarnated in Prophet Noble Drali, the founder. Um, we are, um, we two are one in the same. And a silence fell over the convention hall. However, when a vote was finally taken, two thirds of the delegates voted um, Grand Sheik Miliel and uh, Wolf um, Charles Kirkman Bay as his advisor, the Grand Advisor. And um, nevertheless, by the end of September, a number of subordinate temples would begin to flow, um, follow John Givenel. Um And um, this is taken from the excerpts of the. Um, Macarabin Files, written by um, Brother R. Edward L. <clears throat> All right, so um, from John Givenil, you have um, the Dingle um, L. Brothers, um, Grand Sheik Timothy Dingle L. and his brother Grand Sheik Richardson um, or Richard Dingle L. Um, who both started out in John Givenil, um up on the John Givenil. All right. But of course you have the brothers who are still alive now who come from that school. Um Grand Sheik Jerome, Graham Bay, um Grand Sheik, um Clarence, um Prothera, um L as well as also um, former National Grand Sheik Romani Amanuel. And they came from up in the Richardson Dingle Hill and Timothy Dingle Hill. All right. Now. You also have um, Bratton Bay, Grand Sheik Bratton Bay, which that has the Moorish National Republic, which is also um, from the Dingleville Brothers in that sense. And now we get into the Grand Sheik. Um, Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Miliel, and um, this is what he says: um, I joined the movement January the first, nineteen twenty-seven, and on January the first, nineteen twenty-seven, I was approved of and appointed by Prophet Noble Ali as the first Assistant Chairman of the Moral Science Temple of America. On the first of August in the same year, I received the appointment for the Prophet as the General Chairman of the said Moral Science Temple of America, and was made. Grand Sheik under the Prophet in February 1928. I wrote insurance for the Prophet in the year 1928, and at the close of this said year, um, in that first annual conference, the Divine Prophet Noble Ali promoted me to the office of and rank of Supreme Grand Sheik. This promotion by the Prophet took place in the first setting of the Supreme Grand Council, representing the Moore Science Temple of America, and in a public meeting. Um, it says at 3140 Indiana Ave, in the month of November 1928, the prophet made it very plain in the three statements that he was the supreme grand head 
Brother E. Millie Hill was the Supreme Grand Sheik next to me, the prophet, and that means all the temples in his government, and there is but one more science temple of America, and that is mine. And Noble Drali, at this official meeting in February 1929, I was made shepherd of his flock by him and was told by him to flee, to feed his lambs and his sheep. All right, um, these are the words of Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Milliel, who was in the um, head official um, position. Now, this is where a lot of the debate comes in at, was between these three particular individuals um, within um, the Moorish Science Temple or the Moorish National Divine Movement, because um, the first Supreme Grand Sheik was Emilio, and um, you know, and um, I think it was an official letter in which there's this September 26, 1930, Edward Millie Hill sent um, a letter to Charles Kirkman Bay, an official temple letter, and also that the temple um, stated that in September 1930 that the credentials of this, of those listed here were revoked. Um, on there is alleged that it was Charles Kirkman Bay, um, along with 15 others, who was revoked by Charles Kirkman Bay. Um, Charles Kirkman Bay, along with 15 others, was revoked by um, Supreme Grand Sheik um, Edward Milliel. And it said that actually along with other names not mentioned on the list, um, in which that those who was on the list, some of them um, tried to um, file court paper documents against Supreme um, Grand Sheik Edward Milliel. As a matter of fact, it says that um, Jay Shelbyel of Temple One even tried to get the leadership of the Temple One from Supreme Grand Sheik Ed, um, Edward Milliel on January the 22nd, 1935, by following with the courts against him, and he failed. But he took some members with him. They started their own temple group. By this time, the only thing that Edward Milliel could do, um, um, he left, um, was... Temple One, it says, um, now, let me say this. Um, it is said that he is allegedly that he supposedly died in a mental institution. And I know I heard this um, in 1989 and when I came into the Moore's information and when I started studying in early 1989, on the Moors and Moors history, I came from up under the school of, um, at the time of Charles Kirkman Bay. Um, Cause that's who, that was the only group that we had at the time in North Carolina, uh, was that branch, um, of the temple of the temple. Um, at the time, I was going to college at Feather State University, and. About 25 miles away was Lumberton, North Carolina, and there was a Grand Sheik um, there. And um, they had their temple there at the time, and they was from up on the Charles Kirkman Bay. But they were saying during that time that um, Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Millie Ill had died in a mental institution. Now, we come to find out that that is not true. All right, this was just said in order to make him look bad because there was a uh, rival between him and Charles Kirkman Bay. But it's alleged that um, Supreme Grand Sheik um, Edward Milliel died on a business trip and that his wife, um, Daila um, L., received his possessions. All right.
Now, also, um, late after 1930, um, once the Charles Kirkman Bay um, group began to strengthen itself, it said there was three petitions filed in the court against um, um, Grand Sheik, um, Supreme Grand Sheik um, Edward Milley Hill's leadership. One is February the 13th, 1931, by, by J. Jones Bay. Then another one, February the 23rd, 19. 19- 32 by Charles Kirkman Bay, and then another one in 1933 by S. Levitt Bay and T. Crumbie Bay. Um, that was vacated on November 22, 1933. All of these petitions were removed, and uh, Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Milley Hill and placed Charles Kirkman Bay at the head of the movement. Um, to place Charles Kirkman Bay at the head of the movement, all of them fell. All right, so that was the problem which that was going on is that. Um, Charles Kirkman Bay's group was trying to exalt him to being the Supreme Grand Sheik when he was just the Supreme um, Moderator and Advisor, which, um, as we even you know, if you continue reading some of these books and different articles and things like that, you will find out that that was title was supposedly stripped from him in 1930. Um, you know, but we have many who came. After that, even though it is said that there was no official um, Supreme Grand Sheik appointed after Emilio, um, some goes on to say that um, that it was um, Brother W. Morris L. that took his place, even though he was not officially given that position, but he was given a position under um, um, Supreme Grand Sheik Emilio. But some say that it goes in concession. And um, then there's debates on who was part of that. But you have um, Brother D. Bailey L., uh, who supposedly um, is now saying that he's the Supreme Grand Sheik. Um, you also have um, Brother E. Braswell Bay, um, all right, who supposedly, you know, if you get the information, there's controversy between those two. Um, who put who out of the temple and different things like that. And then, of course, um, you have those who um, broke away in which that formed the MSTA 1928 um, from that foolishness or from that in which that was whatever was taking place between them two, as I may mention of, and now you have the Supreme Grand Sheik um, Chief of Ministers, um, Shaq Ross um of the MSTA 1928. So, um, and of course, he wrote the book, The Controversial Years of the Moral Science Temple of America. All right, so um, these are the prominent individuals and the groups in which that, um, out of the great schism, sprung forth from Prophet Novadrali, and the debate is still raging. It still goes on. And this is some of the problems in which that we are having um, within the movement is that debate. And then, of course, you have those who come up under the school of Charles Mosley Bay or C.M. Bay, um, who formed the Moorish Order in 1947 and who was an actual member of the Moorish Scientist of America um, up under Prophet Nobadrali, but it said that he that was made in ADAP, uh, ADAP by Prophet Novadrali. However, he was a third, 33rd, and 360-degree master mason, a free Moorish master of astrology and Moorish constitutional lawgiver. All right? And it's even said that Charles Mosley Bay was allegedly put out of the temple by Prophet Novadrali, and that it was said that during the meeting, the Prophet heard temple members speaking on things um, that was not taught, nor supposedly accepted by him. This is what is alleged now. You know, some of this is um is fishy when it comes to trying to analyze it and when it comes to analyzing. Because it says he asks who in here believes what this man is teaching and what he was teaching was zodiac and masonry, among other things. Um the prophet in a mighty voice said to those who raised their hands when he asked the question, I shall kill you all he then um, supposedly said anyone who believes this man can leave with him and then supposedly um this this is what took place. Now 
Um, if you read um, some of the um, information within the Moorish literature, you will see that Nobudra Ali supported astrology and astrological teachings. So for him to be upset at Charles Mosley Bay for teaching that is obviously some debate in which that still raged today. All right. Um, however, um, Charles uh, Mosley Bay goes on to form the Moorish Cultural C um, Club, which later gave birth to the um, Clock of Destiny, the Great Civil National Association of Moorish Affairs. All right. And wish that still exists today. And one of the head brothers from out of that was um, C. Freeman L. And wish that is all over YouTube. And actually, I was one of his students also down in Atlanta, Georgia, who um, he taught um, esoteric metaphysics as well as also techniques in breathing and meditation. Now, um, we get into another individual who's part of those three is alleged. Um, of course, we got individuals, you know, who say that David Fordell, Moors who say that David Fordell was Master Ram Muhammad. All right. Um, and then we got some that say he was not, that they was different people. All right. Um, I'm not going to debate on that. The thing is this, is that in the Moorish literature, in the industrious acts of the Muslims, Prophet Nobu Ali does speak about an individual named Ford. He said the primary colors alone was used, said Ford, by the Egyptian Greeks and the Arabs. So, Professor Drew, or the Egyptian adept, Nobu Ali was quoting an individual by the name of Ford, in here, some say that it was different. It was it was not David Ford L. It was just another Ford. Okay, um, we don't know um, per se, but we trying to tie the clues together because that's what we have. Nobody was there. No matter who, no matter how much you want to debate the subject, none of us was there. So the only thing we have is clues, pieces of the puzzle. Now, if you go to the Supreme Lessons of the Nation of Gods and Earth, so what is said to be the 120 um, or student enrollments of the Nation of Islam, um, in this regard, it was called the English Sea Lessons 1 through 36. Um, and it says, My name is W.F. Um, um, Muhammad. That's supposedly still for Ford. But it is said that Prophet, um, that, um, that Elijah Muhammad, Mr. Elijah Muhammad, said he didn't know what the F stood for. But anyway, in that piece, um, in the lesson says, it is said he proclaimed himself the reincarnation of Nobu Ali. So W.F. Muhammad proclaimed himself the reincarnation of Nobu Ali. It is when he began to teach the knowledge of God here in the North America that he set up the first temple of Detroit, where it is said that he had as many as 8,000 followers between 1930 so 1934, he disappeared in 1934, and um, I had a student of his actually by the name of Bilal, um, who lived in Fayetteville, North Carolina, who used to come to my um, bookstore, Cultural Freedom, and who told me personally that he sat up under Master Fra Muhammad um, and was taught by Master Fra Muhammad, uh, and actually worked with him as a cook in Oakland, California. At a restaurant. Now, once again, I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't with Brother Bilal. But this is what it said. And he had no reason in order to lie to me. All right. Another point, um, being that Elijah Muhammad, Messenger Elijah Muhammad, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, was um, or became the number one student of Masrah Muhammad 
that it is alleged and it's said by um, the older Moors. One is Romani Amanuel. He told me on the phone, all right, he told me personally that um, in nineteen in the 1980s, he met with Minister Farrakhan, and Minister Farrakhan told him at a hotel where they talked for over eight hours. That Minister Farrakhan told him that Elijah Muhammad was a member of the Moral Science Temple of America. Now, also, uh, Romani had another brother, Brother YG, who got on the phone, who also spoke about in 1950. He had a meeting with Honorable Elijah Muhammad in a hotel for 11 hours, for over 11 hours. And Elijah Muhammad told him that he was a member of the MSTA, Moral Science Temple of America, and that um, he had more connection with um, John Given Ill group. So this is what has been said to me by um, the Moor Shouters. Take it or leave it alone. I tell you, like Honey Lash Mama used to tell um, you Negroes, take it or leave it alone. It doesn't matter to me. So, so we can debate over and over again, whatever the case is. And this is just some of the information. Um, we're going to go to the phone lines. we got a question. Call us starting with 904. You're on the line. Peace. 904. Call it start with 904. Ending in 4870. Call it ending in 4870. You're on the line. Okay. Um, we continue on then. Now, um, the messenger's son, um, Mufti Muhammad or Wallace Muhammad, and when he took over the nation of Islam in 1975, he said in several speeches that he was in communication with Master Farah Muhammad, and that Master Farah Muhammad is not dead, brothers and sisters, that he is physically alive, and I talk to him whenever, I'm, whenever I get ready. I don't pay him. Um, I don't talk to him in a spooky way. I go to the phone and dial his number. Now, this is what Wafdi Muhammad said. Of course, you know, we can say that um, we don't trust Wafdi Muhammad, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, a lot of um, things have been said about him. Um, however, he claimed that Farad had returned to the United States under the name of Muhammad Abdullah. All right, and then after um, Elijah Muhammad's death, I mean, in 1975, um, Wafdi Muhammad um, actually appointed um, Muhammad Abdullah Imam of Ma 77 in Oakland, California. And that in November um, 26, 1976, in the issue of the Nation Islam Journal, well, then called the Balalian News, reported that Muhammad Abdullah first cooked a servant service or sermon, excuse me, at the mosque, and then they show a photo of him. Now this photo was on an um, actual flyer that they promoted, and this photo was also in um, Malakazi York's book, I think it was called, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it dealt with Master Fra Muhammad, um, I think it was um, Sheik Dao, right, but um, this photo was in that book. Actually, it was a couple of books. All right. And um, now, this is what it says. It says that um, Muhammad Abdullah himself denies that he was Farad, saying that it was all right, um, um, that it's all right to say I am Farad Muhammad for Waf Dean um, or Wallace um, D. Muhammad. I taught him some lessons, but I'm not the same person who taught Elijah Muhammad, and I am not God. 
All right, this is on the Bilalian um, News, November 26, 1976. It actually was in the PD form, all right, on the computer, on the Internet. However, in 1921, I mean, excuse me, in 1981, a Pakistani um, scholar, Z. Um, I. Alzari, he researched Farad's life and claimed that Farad was identical with Muhammad Abdullah, a Pakistani um, um, Ahmadiyya um, Ahmed Muslim. Now, you know the Ahmadiyyas, um, that the Nation of Islam, the Moral Science Temple, all of them, they had connections to the Ahmadiyyas. Muslims who had been an advisor to Elijah Muhammad since the late 1950s. Um, this is what it says um, that the Pakistani have found um, scholars E.I. Al Azari that, um, that Farad was identical to Muhammad Abdullah and that he was the advisor to Elijah Muhammad since the late 1950s, who was the tutor of his son and eventual successor, Wafdi Muhammad. And then in 1991, there was a report in Orthodox Muslim newspaper that carried the story that Farad was alive and living in California and worship as a Orthodox and worship as an Orthodox Muslim. Now, W. D. Muhammad did not state that Muhammad Abdullah was Farad until after Abdullah's death in 1992, and Abdullah himself never publicly claimed to be Farad. In 1993, Imam. Wafdin Muhammad publicly stated that he knew for a fact that Farad had returned to the United States under the name of Muhammad Abdullah. Once again, this is um, things that we have to, um, you know, find out how true it is. You know, um, in the origin of the Nation of Islam, um, in the Farrakhan controversy um, part um, four, by Sergeant Sam Smith, he says, using the alias of David Ford, he obtained a high rank in the Moore Science Temple. There was rumors about his whereabouts until 1990s, where some believe he was still alive and living somewhere in California. This is um, also um, in um, Carl Evans' book, The Messenger, The Rise and Fall of Elijah Muhammad. So many others believe that David Ford L. Um, was Master from Muhammad. All right. Um, in another book, in the um, in original man, the life and times of Elijah Muhammad by Claude Andrew Cleggs the third. He says in Detroit he joined a variety of organizations, notably Marcus Garvey's. Um, now this he's talking about. Um, he's talking about now, um, specifically um, Elijah Muhammad. In Detroit he joined a variety of organizations, notably Marcus Garvey's um, proto Black Nationalist movement. The United um, the United Negro Improvement Association (UNIA) to Black Shriners, but neither of these kept his allegiance. In a further effort to improve himself, Poole also joined the Moral Science Temple of America and converted to um, its vaguely Islamic-like religion, founded in 1913 by a Black Shriner named Timothy Drew. Um, the MSTA introduced such Islamic or Islam-like features as the crescent and the moon motif, the use of the Arabic personal name and the prohibi um, prohibition of pork, but it is also the four told the destruction of all whites of Modru as a prophet. All right, here's another book, um, The Moorish Circle 7 by Keith Moore, 32 Degrees. Um, he says that after the collapse of the temple, a new organization called the Nation of Islam was formed. The organization was funded by Wallace D. Ford, who was a follower of Ali, Noble Ali, though some would later say otherwise. Um, Farad founded the Temple of Islam in Detroit, Michigan, around 1930. At least one source notes that both he and his prodigy, Elijah Muhammad, was members of the Moor Science Temple and exposed to the, temp to the teachings of Ali, Drew Ali. And it says, originally... Mohammed was known as Elijah Pope, a Moorish name. All right. In another book, it's called The Reparations Equal War, What Will Free and Unite Black People, The Nationality 
um, Lineage, Government, and History of the Indigenous Black Aboriginal People in America. This is Volume 1, written by um, Dr. Ali Muhammad. Um, he got a picture here in which that he states that Master Fraud Muhammad under the alias David Ford, pictured in the upper left-hand corner, there were many Masons shown in this picture. The development of the MSTA saw the influence of many high-degree black Shriners, Masons, and secret societies, particularly the ancient Egyptian Arabic order of nobles of the Mystic Shrine, started by Noble, Jeral, um, by Noble Ali, Rafael Pasha, and John um, George Jones in 1893. These secret societies played a major role in the events during the late 1920s and 30s in the governmental change changes in the, in America um, that had great importance to the events happening presently in respect to the subject of reparation and the new world order. All right, so um, um, Ali Muhammad who was a member of the Nation of Islam and um, who now states he's a Moor, um, he states himself that um, Master Front Muhammad was David Ford Muhammad. And, of course, um, the biography of Nova Ali, the Examiner of a Nation, um, in Lowell Pleasant Bay, states the same. All right, so um, it comes to a lot of these um, things here. There's even you know, a picture in which that is known as the um, Moore Science Temple First Annual Convention, in which that um, almost directly behind Prophet Nobu Ali, you see an individual that looked very similar to Elijah Muhammad. In which there was a way in order to clarify. Um, the pictures, and it was in a lot of the debates which has um, been raging. Even though I have to um, state that within the theology of time, um, the messenger does say that I have always had a very high opinion of both the late Noble Drali and Marcus Garvey, and admired their courage in helping our people, the so-called Negroes, and appreciate their works. Both of these men were fine Muslims. The followers of Noble Ali and Marcus Garvey should now follow me and cooperate with us in our work because we are only trying to finish up what those before started. In Islam alone, we should find the success we desire. So join on to our nation now and give us a chance to help all of our people in America. And it says the, um, the black Muslims learned much from Marcus Garvey and Noble Ali. Like those early prophets of black nationalism, they capitalize on the lower class black man's despair and reservations about the white man. And they have developed black consciousness into a convinc- um, conf- confession of faith. The black man, they teach, has a manifest destiny. And the white man is the personification of evil that separates the black man from his freedom, his moral development, and his God for the black nationalist, the black man Zion is where the white man is not. This is from the Theology of Time. And his quotes about Noble Drali and Marcus Garvey. All right. Um, this is also um, an excerpt from a speech delivered by um, Minister Louis Farrakhan on July 27, 2003. And it's a follow that before Elijah Muhammad, you looked at yourselves as Negroes. One of the most wonderful black organizations was the United Negro Improvement Association, which showed that we still had to grow and to do what a wonderful, wonderful teacher Marcus Garvey was. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad loved and admired him. Nobu Ali is the father of what we call the Moorish Americans or the Moorish scientists. Nobu Ali was admired by Elijah Muhammad because he said that the Nobu Ali gave us a start in the direction towards Islam. Um, the Moorish brothers wore feathers with their crescent and a tassel swinging freely, and they took the names Bay or L. All right. Now, these are just some of the connecting pieces. And um, we recommend more study and research. Now, um, I'm seeing there's not many questions here um, tonight. 
Um, but um, I guess we get back into it. Um, there's a um, actual picture. Um, it says that this actually was from the final call to Islam. Um, in August 18th, 1934, Detroit, Michigan. Um, you would see an actual photo or picture, and this is what it says. And you see brothers um, wearing fezzes um, in the Nation of Islam in 1934. It says in the above picture, you will see a few of the high-ranking officials who have been received um, the OK of Prophet Farad. In the upper left corner, you will see Prophet W.D. Farad, who hails from the holy city Mecca. All right, Prophet Farad Muhammad is our deliverer by prophecy of the Bible and Quran. So even at this time, they was calling Farad Muhammad Prophet Farad Muhammad. And, of course, that came through the fact that it is said that um, Farad Muhammad um, was said, even by the Father Sinners, um, Nation of Gods and Earth, that um, Farad Muhammad um, said that he was the reincarnation of Prophet Noble Ali. So hence he now takes on the title Prophet here, by 1934, all right, um, in the nation of Islam. And it says, um, also interesting, you have um, in Carl Evans' book, it says, interestingly, um, Elijah Muhammad reportedly attended meetings at the MSTA in Detroit. Though he consistently denied joining the group founded by Noble Drali, the nation of Islam and the MSTA share similarity, similar beliefs and practices. One tradition, men wearing the maroon fezzes were outlawed by Muhammad in 1935. And also, um, one of the, um, um, it shows that there was over 25,000 identification cards, which is similar to the nationality cards by the Moorish Science Temple of America that the Nation of Islam used to actually give out. Uh, from 1932-1934 for registered Muslims. Um, matter of fact, an article from Muhammad Speaks newspaper dated April 11, 1969, it says entitled Clarification of Action Taken by Messenger of Muhammad Against Muhammad Ali's Actions. Um, the Elijah Muhammad states a reference to these identity passes. It says the government of the America has known this law of Allah for many years, the law is that it that to take the identity card away from you. This is written on the identity cards in red letters. Mr. Clashes Clay um, did not have one of these cards. It is good that he did not have one. Nevertheless, we carry the principles into practice. So, um, the nation of Islam, even today, have nationality cards, identification cards. This is where now they want to get identification cards, the United States, that is, want to get identification cards for their members. All right. Now, we know, of course, coming from um, the Nation of Islam, one of the last ones to deal with this, we've dealt with the... Um, you know, the great schism of the, more, of the MSTA. But the Nation of Islam is part of that, um, largely said by those who do the research and studies, by scholars, um, researchers, writers, as well as also from Moorish members, um, that the Nation of Islam was formed from the Moorish Science Temple of America. Um, me personally, I see that it definitely was, um, once again, um, take it or leave it alone. But what we have is, of course, Malcolm X, Minister Farrakhan, Dr. Khalid Muhammad, and those who come um, after. All right. Um, we also want to get into um, the conspiracy of what happened with Malcolm II. All right. Um, 
let's get into the Judas factor, the plot to kill Malcolm X, the assassination of Malcolm X. Um, the Judas factor, the plot to kill Malcolm X, was written by Carl Evans. Um, the assassination of Malcolm X um, is another book. Matter of fact, what I want to get into it because um, the individual who they actually, um, Thomas Hagen or Talmadge Hager or whatever you want to refer to, whatever his name is now, he actually, um, uh, well, his name now is Majid, uh, Mahid, uh, Majid, Mahid, uh, Majid, Mahid, Majid, um, Halim, and he was parole, parole, parole justice actually last year, 2010. You know, and he was one of the killers. He was the one who actually stated that he killed Malcolm. But um, this is what it says. On February 21st, 1965, um, we know that Malcolm was in the ballroom, um, Alba Bond ballroom, in which that Malcolm was um, getting ready to speak to the Organization of African American Unity when, of course, um, disruption broke out. Um, in a crowd of over 400, and a man, you know, yell, and get your hand out of my pocket. You know what I'm saying? And then um, as Malcolm X, you know, and his guards rushed, you know, uh, the quiet, the disturbance, <clears throat> you know, um, individuals pulled out, you know, shotguns and sort of shotguns and um, handguns and fired, you know, you know, more than 16 times or 16 times said Malcolm. You know, you know, killing him dead, hitting him in his chest and arms, legs, whatever else. And um, Malcolm was pronounced dead at 3:30, and um, shortly arrived at the um, Columbia um, Presbyterian Hospital. Now I understand that because right down the street, Harlem Hospital. You know, and um, but um, that's another story. Um, Nation Islam member, you know, Thomas Hagen was arrested on the scene. Witnesses identified two more suspects. And actually, it was three uh, or more. Um, but the two that they got was um, Norman 3X Butler and Thomas 15X Johnson, who they picked up later on, who were members. Um, you know, but they didn't do the shooting. And this um, Thomas Hay um, Hagen um, confessed to that. All right, he said that they didn't do the killing. Um, these two men were not involved. Um, and what happened is that I think when Norman 3X Butler got out of um, jail um, and he was paroled, um, I think it was probably about maybe 10 years ago or so, um, Mr. Farrakhan put him um, actually in charge of um, Temple Number no. 7 in um, Harlem, New York, which was the former temple of. Um, in which he presided over as well as also Malcolm. However, there was an uproar about that. And so, um, you know, I think he was later on. I think that, you know, changed some things. But um, it was, let's continue on here. All right, now this is what we found out. That, um, Thomas Hagen, um, that on the night of what, February 20th, 1965, the night before the assassination, John Ali, um, John Ali, who was the secretary, who was like the um, third highest in charge behind the Herbert Muhammad, um, met with Thomas Hayer and one of the um, men convicted of the killing of, uh, who was convicted um, of killing Malcolm. And then in 1977 and 1978, Thomas Hayer submitted um, to two sworn affidavits reasserting that is claimed that Butler and Johnson was not involved in the assassination. And his affidavit had named four men, all members of the Nation of Islam, um, Newark, New Jersey, Temple, number 25, as having participated with him in the crime. He asserted that the men later identified as Wilbur McClanley, shot it and threw a smoke bomb to create a diversion. Um, Hagen said that the other man um, later identified as William Bradley, held the shotgun and was the first to um to shoot or fire on Malcolm um X after the diversion. And um in Malcolm X a life of reinvention, uh, Marble 
Marble um, claims that William Bradley, now known as Al Mustafa Shabazz of New Jersey, was involved in the assassination. But he has vehemently um, denied the claim through his um, through his lawyer. Now he can assert that he and a man later identified as Leon David, um, later armed with pistols fired on Malcolm after the shotgun blast. Hagen also said that a fifth man later identified as Benjamin Thomas was involved in the conspiracy. Um, Hagen's statements failed to convince authorities to reopen the investigation of the murder. All right. Now, um, these are the individuals. Now, if you get... Now, of course, you can do some research on um, on the assassination of Malcolm. Um, the reason why it was believed that Mr. Farrakhan was involved in the assassination of Malcolm X is because he was in Newark, New Jersey, the night before it happened on what is called Minister Rotation, in which that he was at the Newark, New Jersey um, Temple Mosque, um, number 25, um, there, um, on minister rotation, as they say, all right? Um, he was, at that time, the Boston, Massachusetts um, temple um, um, head. And um, on minister rotation, he was down in Newark, New Jersey. Um, at that time, some say that it was coincidental. Some say that it was not coincidental. And this is where, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, of course, you know, Minister Farrakhan did say that, you know, based on the things which that he was saying at the time, you know, um, things that was written in um, Muhammad Speaks at the time did call for Malcolm's death and it could have led to those men definitely going after. But as far as the actual planning, um, Mr. Farrakhan has not stated that he actually planned that, you know, that he's part of that planning committee. But we know that John Ali was uh, based on the FBI uh, reports. Um, but, of course, this is where some of the Shabazz, uh, Malcolm's um, ex-family, has accused Louis Farrakhan of being involved in the plot to assassinate Malcolm. Um, you know, of course, then in the 1993 speech, Farrakhan seemed to boast of the assassination. Um, was Malcolm your traitor of all hours? You know what I'm saying? And if we dealt with him like a nation deal with a traitor, what the hell business is it of yours? All right? Um, a nation has to be able to deal with traitors and cutthroats and turncoats. All right. Um, this is what was said. Now, it's also in a um, 60 minute interview to air um, during um, May 2000, Farrakhan stated that some of the things he said may have led to the assassination of Malcolm X I may have been um, complicated in the words um, that I've spoken. Um, he said, I acknowledge that and regret that any word that I have said caused the life um, the loss of life of a human being. And, of course, a few days later, Farrakhan denied that he ordered the assassination of Malcolm X, although he, again, acknowledged that he created the atmosphere in which that, you know, that he helped create the atmosphere in which that later ultimately led to Malcolm X's assassination. All right. However... And we know at the time that um, Malcolm said, too, that um, whoever was spying on him when he was in Egypt, that definitely was outside. Um, because these was Europeans, Albion, and obviously it was the FBI or CIA, or what is called COINTELPRO, who was doing an um, investigation on Malcolm at that time, who was spying on him. And he said it was even Malcolm. Um, said prior to him going um, to um, Africa that there was things in which that was going on um, in which that was outside of the nation of Islam. In other words, um, we found out that these individuals being trained who were in the nation of Islam, who infiltrated the nation of Islam, um, John Ali was an FBI um, informant. All right? According to FBI reports, he was an informant. He was trained by the FBI. So he was an infiltrator, and he moved up to the ranks of the, thir um, of the third highest ranking in the organization at the time when Anup Elijah Muhammad was alive, you know. So, you know, and then you see 
we just was talking about that Thomas Hagen went to John Ali, so he was also trained, um, you know, or a patsy. You know, just like there's been many patsies when it comes to assassinations. You know, so we see this over and over again. And, um, you know, what we can say about that, you know, is real simple. All right, before we leave to get off of here, um, we want to bring up the fact of the death of Dr. Khaled Muhammad, who stated that he was a more, uh, while a member of um, the New Black Panther Party and the chairman of the New Black Panther Party, he stated that he was a more. Now, interesting about that is that he was working with other Moors at the time, Wesley Snipes, um, Dr. Um, Malachi York, as well as also Stevie Wonder, who have all confessed that they are Moors. Now, they was getting ready to bring together um, 400 acres apiece or more of land, and they was getting ready to form a city. Now, we come to find out that Dr. Khaled um, was poisoned. All right? Um, it is alleged or been stated by the New Black Panther Party, um, Malik Zulu Shabazz, who's now the uh, chairman now, that Dr. Khaled was poisoned. Um, there was a rug in which that I know that Steve Coakley brought up about um, the concern about when he was poisoned, that he supposedly vomited on this rug, and this rug supposed to have been analyzed, in which that we have never heard anything more about this rug. And if this rug was analyzed, but yet it was made mention of the fact that it was to be analyzed by Malik Zulu Shabazz. Now, the thing is this, is that there was a report put out by the New Black Panther Party in which that um, they detail um, some of the events in which that occurred that night, in which that um, Dr. Khaled's wife, Ann Bush, um, who worked for the Jews, um, allegedly, um and supposedly is nowhere to be found now. Um, that supposedly um, Dr. Khaled and his wife uh, made love, and he went to the bathroom and came back out and collapsed onto the floor where she allowed for him to basically suffocate within his vomit um, over an eight-hour span or so. And... Supposedly, she was instructed by Dr. Khaled not to take him to a hospital because people know who he was, all right? But yet, within eight hours, nothing was done. You know, so, I mean, um, you have to get the report from the Black Panther Party of, um, and, um, you know, contact um, Chairman Malik Zulu Shabazz and get the report, and um, you can read more details about it, and then, of course, go back and analyze um, Steve Coakley's information on the killing of Dr. Khaled Muhammad. I suggest you get the um, tape, um, and um, Steve goes in on it. And um, there's a lot of questions concerning that, but we know for sure that um, that they did not want this to take place between these four brothers. Um, Dr. Khaled ends up dead. Dr. Malakaz York ends up in jail. Um, Stevie Wonder, uh, we haven't heard too much from. And Wesley Snipes, he ends up going to jail also for tax evasion. And we said he held them off for at least seven years or so. So, um, we see that this is the same scenario in which that took place when, um, when brothers were getting ready to come together to form a major music distribution company. It was going to be Jay Prince or Prince Jay of Rap a Lot Records, um, Irv Gotti, uh, Suge Knight, as well as also Damon Dash. And it's like that word got out by Jay Z, that Jay Z squealed supposedly to some of his Illuminati um, peeps, in which that caused that scenario between them four brothers not to t um, to take place. And, of course, the same thing happened. Or if God, he got in trouble for tax um, problems, tax evasion or whatever, ends up going to jail. Um, Suge Knight goes to jail, probation issues. Um, Jay Prince um, get problems, you know, 
uh, court situations and I believe even jail time and Damon Dash um, get bankrupt, you know, basically. And now um, had to go back on his hands and knees groveling to Jay-Z, you know, who's about to become the first um, year of hip-hop, you know. And, of course, they, of course they'll tell you that Jay-Z and Beyonce are the most powerful couple in entertainment, right? Um, as well as the fact that he was the, um, Jay-Z was the ambassador of the water rights over Africa. So, to me, he obviously was part of the AFRICOM thing in which that is going on, which that, you know, we'll get more to that a little bit later on. You know, and, you know, of course, you've already seen the exposed videos of Illuminati connections and Masonic connections and so forth and so on, um, which, of course, some of that is propaganda. However, um, some of the things need to be analyzed. All right, so these are the things in which that is going on. We definitely just want to put it out there, do your research, get more info in, and um, you know, basically, you know, um, we're going to call it peace. <laughs> First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio, every Wednesday, 8 p.m., got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceeding others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burn. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burn. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Burn. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works.